Uh, so Treasury and Commerce Department okayed your request. The next step is, we mentioned, is to get the okay from Cuba. Can you tell us what the approval process is like from Cuba's government and when you're likely to get it? Hey, good morning, Scarlett. Uh, yeah, we're excited. It's a privilege to have received the licenses from the Treasury Department and the Commerce Department. Uh, we're very excited. At the same time, you know, we are working uh, with the Cubans uh, to get uh, what we need from them so we can actually honor our intent, which is to sell in May of 2016 with our Fathom brand, uh, about 700 guests uh, every other week uh, into Cuba. And you mentioned the Fathom brand. That's one of the newest brands you have in your portfolio. Tell us how that brand is a good fit with an education or humanitarian voyage to Cuba. Well, as you know, Scarlett, we have 10 brands, and Fathom is our newest, which we launched just a few weeks ago. Uh, it evolved from an original intent to have uh, sustainable, systematic social impact. Uh, it's targeted initially at the, in the Dominican Republic, the Puerto Plata region, where travelers will have the opportunity to be enriched by working alongside Dominicans who have a real track record of, of social transformation in a community in the areas of environment and education and, and uh, economic development. Uh, and with Cuba, of course, it's a little different. It's cultural exchange. It's immersion in Cuban society. Uh, it's the first time in 50 years, Scarlett, where a ship will be able to go from the U.S. carrying passengers to Cuba and then to return and repeat that process. And so uh, we feel privileged to have received the U.S. licenses and are excited about working with the Cubans to ensure that we do everything possible uh, so we can sail in May of 2016. And Mr. Donald, certainly you guys have done a lot of due diligence. You've done your research, your marketing research. Uh, what does all your studies show you or indicate when it comes to what travelers want to get out of a trip to Cuba? And how does it break down when it comes to baby boomers, for instance, versus, say, millennials? Well, you know, in the U.S., there's so much pent up to man and, and curiosity about Cuba. And so we're very much looking forward to honoring what guests and travelers are seeking, which is basically immersion in, in the Cuban culture, uh, to just experience it. Uh, the arts, you know, the foods, uh, the environmental uh, work that's already going on in Cuba, uh, the other cultural exchange aspects and education and religion. And so that's what people are seeking, whether it's millennials or whether it's people who are older and have traveled on regular tours, uh, you know, this type of uh, cultural exchange excursion, there's high demand, especially for Cuba. But mm -hmm. we also know there's real demand uh, for our Dominican Republic itineraries as well. Uh, Mr. Donald, can you tell me about the existing infrastructure in Havana to accommodate large cruise ships like the Fathom? What kind of additional investment will be needed uh, for you to be able to make this happen? Well, at this stage, the Fathom is using one of our P&O ships that's being redeployed. It's the Adonia, a beautiful ship, carries about 700 guests. And the ship of that size, we already have charted on the waters. Of course, we need to do some additional work before we sail in May of 2016. But we you know, definitely can see that ship being readily accommodated in a number of ports. Over time, once the embargo is lifted, and we see this as a first step, not just for us, but for the industry overall, uh, obviously, to take the larger ships in, uh, port development will have to occur. The Cubans are very much aware of that, and we look forward to working with them, along with others in our industry, to do just that. Yeah, exactly. Norwegian Cruise Line has said also that it, too, is looking to enter the Cuban market. 